Happy Wednesday mga ka-SFT. Challenge accepted ang sagot ni Vice President Lenny Robredo sa kanyang appointment to lead the drug war. Dumarami nga ba ang mga kabataan na nagkakaroon ng mental health issues? Live streaming first before airing on GMA News TV. I'm Mark Salazar on behalf of Atom Araulio. Stand with us. Stand for truth. Tinanggap na ni Vice President Lenny Robredo ang pwesto ang co-chairman ng ICAD o Interagency Committee on Anti-Illegal Drugs. Kaya tinatanggap ko ang trabaho na binibigay sa akin ng Pangulo. Hindi raw siya nagahabol sa anumang pwesto. Marami na nga raw nagsabing hindi niya dapat tanggapin ang pwesto dahil hindi naman siya susundin. Kahit sabihin na natin na ang alok na ito ay pamumuliti ka lamang. At hindi naman talaga ako susundin ng mga ahensya, handa akong tiisin ang lahat ng ito. Dahil kung meron akong maililigtas na kahit isang inosenteng buhay, ang sinasabi ng prinsipyo at puso ko ay kailangan ko itong subukan. Alam daw ng Pangulo ang posisyon niya at kung iniisip daw ng Pangulo ay mapapatahimik siya ng appointment na ito ay nagkakamali siya. Sa huli, minsahe ng Vice Presidente, handa siya makipagtulungan sa Pangulo sa huling dalawat kalahating taon ng administrasyon. Big news guys! Kanina lang tinanggap ni Vice President Lenny Robredo yung appointment ni President Duterte sa kanya bilang co-chairperson ng Interagency Committee on Anti-Illegal Drugs or ICAD. In short, she's now the drug czar. Ano bang implication nito para sa ating politika and for Vice President Lenny Robredo? The good for Lenny Robredo is this. In a way, parang natanggap ni Paolo Duterte na siya yung duly elected Vice President. Huwag natin kalimutan yung political context. For years and in recent weeks, contested yung position ni Lenny Robredo. But mukhang since her latest recount victory, even though yung case sa Supreme Court is still uh, pending, In a way, President Duterte himself accepted Lenny Robredo as a vice president. Otherwise, what's the point of appointing her into his government? The question here is, bibigyan ba siya ng sapat na puwersa to really oversee the drug war? For instance, meron ba siyang kakayan mag-appoint ng incoming Philippine National Police Chief? Meron ba siyang kakayan to ensure that Scalawag's police are disciplined and punished? Meron ba siyang kakayan to ensure interagency coordination para meron tayong comprehensive approach dun sa ating drug problem and of course, the issue of rehabilitation of people who are dependent on drugs. Because kung hindi siya bibigyan ng sapat na power, then she's not really a drug czar. And more than that, she will be blamed if something goes wrong. In fairness naman, siguro may point yung mga supporters ni Vice President Lenny Robredo na sasabihin na baka trap ito. She will be blamed if anything goes wrong. Or this is a distraction from her other advocacy and other agenda as the Vice President of the Republic. Dahil you have people from different sides of the political spectrum joining the drug war, baka mangyari lang dyan, lalong mapolitika yung drug war natin at lalong hindi maging effective. And these are the good, bad, and potentially ugly dimensions of Lenny Robredo's appointment as a new drug czar. Rice is life ka ba? O kaya tulad ni Arson na Andy Rice is lifer? Bilang ang maximum na nakakaigo sa isang fast food na rice is 10. Ganun, tapos minsan napapadami pa pala na pag-miss na bago. Mula kong sinasaya na kain kasi ano, maraming nagubutom. Pag may natitira, naisip yung mga nagubutom. Ngayong Nobyembre, sinaselebrate natin ang National Rice Awareness Month. Kaya naman titingnan natin, gaano nga ba talaga kahalaga ang bawat butil ng kanin para sa mga Pilipino? Basis sa 2013 National Nutrition Survey of the Food and Nutrition Research Institute, umaabot sa 14 grams o 3 tablespoons ng bigas ang nasasayang kada araw. Katumbas yan ng halos 550,000 kilos ng bigas o 11,000 na sako kada taon. Kung susumahin, 42% na raw yan ng total rice import sa taon na yun. Kaya para sa Department of Agriculture, makakatulong ang hindi pagsasayang ng kanin para ma-reduce ang ini-import nating bigas. In a way, pag may waste stage na ito nga, half a million tons, no? dami nito, 500,000 kilos, ibig sabihin marami pa mga papakain, di ba? At kung yun ay pinabi natin, 
mabigyan sa mga maralita, maray mong papakain na mga kababayan natin. Sayang ito. Nakakalungkot na ganito karami ang nasasayang na pagkain, gayong marami ang nagugutom. Sa third quarter 2019 survey ng social weather stations, lumabas na 2.3 million families o 9.1% ang nakaranas ng involuntary hunger o nagutom dahil wala makain. Sa mga maralita, isang tasang kanin, malaking bagay yun para sa kanila. Kaya sabi nga ng mga nakakatanda sa atin, huwag takaw mata. Isipin ang mga nagugutom bago magtira ng sinandok na kanin. I am Edward Faraon and I stand for truth. May onboard entertainment. Ang upuan, pwedeng-pwedeng i-recline. May snacks and meals. At may stewardess pa. Dahil sa amenities na ito, akala mo nasa eroplano ka. Pero wag ka, bas ng iyan. Tara, biyahe tayo. Pero di ba mas masaya gumala kung mas komportable ang ating biyahe? Kaya ang iba't ibang bus companies, kanya-kanyang pakulo sa kanilang premium services. Ito ang executive bus ng isang bus company na bumabiyahe papuntang Baguio at Baler. Makikita natin na napaka-komportable ng seats. Pwede kang mahiga at pwede mong i-recline. Meron din silang mga onboard na video on demand uh, screens para sa entertainment ng mga pasahero. Kasi medyo mahaba ang biyahe papuntang Baler at Baguio. Pero ayan, may entertain ka dito. Eh, magkano naman kaya ang pamasahe? Going to Baguio po, meron tayong dalawang fare dyan. It's 760 and then 730. It's Pasay going to Baguio. Ang um, baler po natin, meron tayong din dalawang fare dyan. Yung po yung 650 at 730. May student discount tayo, 20% student discount. Welcome aboard! So parehas lang din ang ina-offer na service ng isang bus company na ito. Very comfortable, reclining ang seat, at meron ding mga tablets where you can watch some movies or check the route of your trip. Full compliance kasi very strict. So safe na safe talaga siya. Tsaka on time, friendly, malinis, tsaka pati mga employees talagang they're really ano. Para kang naka-aeroplano. Ang ating pong biyahe papuntang Naga, aabutin po dito ng siyam na oras. So ito naman yung bus na kamakailan lang ay nag-viral sa social media. Papaano ba namang hindi magba-viral kung ganitong klasing upuan ang uupuan mo sa isang halos 10 hour na trip to Bicol? So ito na yung ipinagmamalaki nila na oversized, customized reclining seat na makikita natin ay gawa sa leather. Uh, try nga natin kung paano ito. Wow! Good rest. Pwede binigline. Super comfy. Ang pamasahe papuntang Naga sa Bicolandia, 2,000 pesos para sa oversized na seats. Para naman sa regular seat, pero reclining din, 1,250 pesos. Mukhang sulit naman. Nakakatuwa na nagkakaroon na rin ng upgrade ang ating transport system. Bagaman hindi pa lahat, unti-unti namang umuusa dito. Sana lang lahat ay afford ito. I'm Anthony Esguera and I stand for truth. Young Filipinos are said to be in the midst of a mental health crisis. MJ Hieronimo has the story. 25-year-old Yana, not her real name, tells her story. I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So I had my third episode last year lang. So nakatatlong major manic episode na ako. Dahil sa kanyang bipolar disorder, extreme emotional states ang kanyang nararanasan. The manic state o yung sobrang energetic at yung depressed state o yung sobrang lungkot na kalagayan. May mga hallucinations at delusions na rin daw siya. I had psychosis. Um, delusions and hallucinations ko normally talaga religious siya. I was receiving messages from God, from heaven, and then may ging propeta daw ako or something. Her trigger, too much stress. Nag Natitrigger talaga ako ng too much stress na talaga. Like for example, kapag meron ng family problems, umabot ako sa point na rock bottom na. Every day we deal with different emotions pero for some people, these emotions could be very high or very low to the point that their daily lives are already severely affected. 
25-year-old Marian suffers from manic depression. Um, na-diagnosed ako 2016 ng manic depression. Nasasaktan ko na yung sarili ko. This condition still affects her today kahit na may family na siya of her own. Ngayong may baby na ako, hindi ko masasabing nagbago talaga totally na. Hindi rin kasi recently may maraming attacks. At hindi ko naisip na may baby na ako. According to research, over 17 million or 2 out of 10 Filipinos suffer from a major depressive disorder. Meanwhile, a study by the World Health Organization in 2007 revealed that 16% of Filipino children had mental illness. Sabi ng psychologist na si Dr. Lillian Nangdi, babata ng babata ang nagkakaroon ng mental illness. May mga external factor daw na nakaka-apekto dito, katulad ng social media. Because kadalasan, instead of going out and being with friends, social media na sila nagkikita. So numbers sa social media to them means more friends. Malaking factor din yung structure ng family. Hindi ko sinasabi na araw-araw dapat kasama yung mga bata. Because it, it's not the quantity. It's always the quality of relationship you have with your family members. Sobrang laking bagay na yung lambeng na ayun kasi yung hindi ko nakita sa pamilya ko ever since. Kaya sobrang laki nung nakikita ko lang yung lambeng. According to Dr. Gee, there are ways to help mitigate the negative effects of a mental illness to a loved one. Ang nangyayari lang kasi sa ating kadalasan, pinapabayaan natin. Awareness is very, very important. Hindi niyo pwedeng i-brush aside at sabihin lungkot yun. For Yana and Morian, gumagawa rin sila ng paraan so they can cope with their conditions. I make accessories. Um, I make accessories tapos in-incorporate ko yung advocacy ko to my accessories. Pag marami ako naiisip, sinusulat ko siya. As in kahit anong madampot ko, sinusulat ko. May bayo rin sila sa mga katulad nila who suffer from mental illness. Huwag kayong magpapatalo sa kung ano man demon yung nasa loob niya. Do not let this illness define you. Kilalanin mo yung sarili mo. If we save a life, we help save a soul. So let's be together in helping save the lives of people by not ignoring them, by being sensitive, and by being educated ourselves. May mga numero ring pwedeng tawagan para sa mga nangailangan ng tulong. Mental illness should not define a person. And sabi nga ni Dr. Gee, let's be educated so that those who suffer from mental illness will not have to deal with it alone. I'm MJ Jeronimo and I stand for truth. There's a common belief na tayo mga Pilipino ay masayahin and that we are very resilient despite the worst superstorms hitting our country. But according to scientific studies, halos 2 out of 10 Filipinos that suffer with a major depressive disorder. The World Health Organization even said that 800,000 people die globally every year because of depression. So guys, let's be honest, obvious na obvious na we have a mental health problem in our country. Pero sabi nga ni Dr. Violeta Bautista, isang clinical psychologist and director of UP Psychosocial Service, the reason why hindi nasusolve ang mental health problem dito sa Pilipinas is because of the stigma surrounding it. Ano ba ang mga misconceptions about mental health problem? Una, people dismissively say na inarte lang yan. O kaya sasabihin nila na mahina ka, idaan mo na lang yan sa alak o tulog. Of course, that's easier said than done. Not only is this false, but it's extremely harmful for the people battling with the illness. Ang mental health problem kasi, especially depression, can affect everything negatively. The way you think, the way you feel, and how you act. It's more than just a feeling. Hindi siya panangdalingan lungkot na pwede itulog lang. Having mental disorders like schizophrenia and depression can cause abnormal thoughts, behavior, and perception. There are many factors that contribute to mental health problems, such as genes, brain chemistry, trauma, and even a history of abuse. Kaya we should treat mental health the same way as we treat physical health. Kung napilayan ba ang isang tao at hindi na muna makatayo, sasabihin mo ba na nag iinarte ka lang? Of course not! Pupunta ka sa doctor to get a proper treatment for your condition. Kasi kapag pinabayaan mo ito, it's just going to get worse and may lead to more harm. No amount of alcohol, sleep, or good vibes can just make the problem go away. Second, yung sinasabi nila na walang ganyan nung panahon nila, gawa-gawa lang yan ng new generation. Akala nyo lang yun, pero meron, meron, meron! FYI, dati na may depression guys. Mas nabibigyan pansin na lang siya. 
these days. As it should, dahil napag-usapan na siya more openly online without stigma. Thankfully, the Mental Health Act, which aims to provide accessible and affordable mental health services and help eradicate stigma, has been signed into law. And lastly, sinasabi nila na sakit lang yan ng mga mayayaman. According to news sources, a lot of institutes offer services for free. But yung mga private doctors, they charge 1,500 up to 4,500 pesos per session. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, marami sa ating kababayan na mas mahihirap, hindi sila nakapag-afford to go to a doctor to be properly diagnosed and treated for mental health problems. Although there are many facilities across the country, marami pa rin kailangan itagdag. Former National Center for Mental Health Chief Dr. Bernardino Vicente said that only one psychiatrist is available for every 200,000 Filipinos. And most of these doctors are based in urban areas. Para sa mga nasa malalayong lugar, madalang lang maging available ang treatment and medication. Mental health illnesses are dire issues that we need to face head on. Kaya sa susunod na may napansin kayong kakaiba sa inyong kaibigan, kapatid o anak, bago mo sila husgan, make sure to listen to them properly first so they can have the treatment they deserve before it's too late. For those in need, tawagan lang ang suicide prevention hotline ng Department of Health Dial 804-4673 or 0917-558-4673. May gusto ba kayong mapanood ng mga istorya? Open kami for suggestions. Just leave a comment on our videos. I'm Mark Salazar on behalf of Atom Aralio. Stand with us. Stand for truth.